Well, TV fans, after delivering many, many acclaimed comedic performances and everything from Arrested Development to BoJack Horseman, my next guest finds himself now hosting Fox's latest reality competition series, Lego Masters. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and with me is Will Arnett. It's so great to talk to you, Will. You know, it's strangely, Lego has become this really huge, huge part of your life over the last few years, as you've, you, you know, ever since you voiced Lego Batman and the Lego movies and then uh, those spinoffs, um, it's just become this thing that's ubiquitously associated with you. So did you ever expect like that character was going to become such such a thing that people knew you for and, and got such a claim for? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me say that um, I could not have anticipated um, years, all those years ago, I mean, I guess almost 10 years ago maybe, uh, when Phil Lord and Chris Miller called me and asked me to be part of the Lego movie uh, to to voice Lego Batman. I couldn't have anticipated how big a role Lego would end up playing uh, in my life. Um, you know, I I, I thought um, we're going to make an animated movie. I'll voice Lego Batman. Even as we were doing it, I thought this is really fun, great. And the movie came out, people liked it, and that's it. And then they were like... Um, Quite literally, the night the Lego movie, the first one came out, we were all out sort of celebrating, and, and Phil and Chris said, so great, um, we're going to make Lego Batman next. Yeah. And I thought, oh, okay, awesome. <laughs> and then it just kept rolling from there. And then, so when they approached me um, from Fox and and, um, and the people over at Endemol and said, you know, we'd like to make Lego Masters um here and, and and this is sort of this is what it is uh even though i'd never done anything like that before and i pointed this out before even when i produced my own um uh, uh game show with when, when we brought back the the uh, uh the gong show mm -hmm. i never considered being a presenter or being a host um and but when they asked me to do this i thought yeah this is kind of a fit like it makes sense to me it, it, it's such a huge part of my life and I was interested to see, to be part of it and to see what all these great Lego builders out there in the Lego building community could do. Um, so it was just like a very natural, organic fit for me. And the cool thing about Lego is I think it's one of the really few toys and really one of the few properties that has sort of a cross-generational appeal. Um, and I wondered, did, did you have any kind of like emotional attachment to that? Was that a part of your life coming into it? Well, yeah. I mean, it, even initially, again, doing the, the, the first Lego movie, it, there was that nostalgia, I guess I'd, say, I'd call it, that, that, uh, that I harbored for, uh, for Lego because I played with Lego as a kid myself. Um, and Lego has this amazing ability to uh, inspire ideas and creativity in kids. And I'm no exception to that. And, and uh, I spent countless hours as a kid playing with Lego. Um, and then I had a brother who was much younger than me. Um, and he started playing with Lego when I was in my early teens. And even though it was like, maybe I, maybe it was something that I wouldn't have normally done had I not had a little brother, I continued to play with Lego with him quite deep into my teens. And then, um, and then I had my own kids uh, who started to play with Lego. And so it's been this thing that, that I can really appreciate on a personal level. Um, and it's a, you know, a shared experience that I have with people in my life whom I love. Um, and also um, something that I have a personal connection to um, through my own, uh, you know, uh, enjoyment of Lego. So it's, yeah, it's, and and I get it, and I understand. So I can really relate to people's passion for Lego, and I see it all the time, and I hear from people all the time, and I love it because because uh, I share that same passion. Yeah, it's really fun to watch you host the show, and I, I was thinking about different reality show hosts for these competition series. They kind of take on different roles, like they might be there, kind of like as a mentor or just an entertainer. And I'm wondering, how do you see your role in this show as host? <laughs> I kind of look at it as a lot of the time, A, I'm, I, again, I'm, I'm often just in awe 
of the ideas the builders come up with um, based on a challenge um, from the moment that they they that that idea first comes to them to seeing them sketch it out to seeing them execute it um, so I'm in awe and I end up becoming really more of a cheerleader than anything uh, it's kind of like I'm a super fan who gets to be there to, to cheer them on and, and encourage them um, to go for it and even when you know they might hit a hit a snag or get um, or upset or whatever I am my role is to kind of champion them and uh, encourage them to um, not get down or, or whatever it is. Uh, you know, it's one of the great things I love about the show that there is this feeling of we're not a gotcha show. We're not looking to see people at their worst. We're looking to see people at their best within yeah. the, the context of, of the show. And so I'm always trying to redirect people back to that. That's, I don't know if it's a role that I assigned myself, but it's just the role that ended up, that's what it became quite organically. Yeah, there's a really nice moment where, um... Sam and Jessica, like in episode two, the, the Space Nash one, um, they, they're they kind of not getting along, they're arguing, and you step in to sort of really keep the peace. And I think it's refreshing to see a competition series that maintains a competitive spirit, but is not mean-spirited. Is that, is that like a conscious effort with the show? Absolutely. And I, and I, think, it, I think it's because, you know, I remember that moment uh, distinctly because you know, um, they were not getting along at that moment and they didn't know each other that well. Um, they had met in the process of putting the show together. They were both Lego builders in their own right, but they hadn't worked together as a team. And so it's only natural that there are going to be moments, even even with people who are super tight, that there are going to be moments where they don't see eye to eye. And so I picked up on them uh, um the, the sort of the volume and the frequency with which they were getting along was increasing. And I said to Anthony uh, Dominici, our, our showrunner, I said, I, I just kind of want to step in. And it was never, I didn't want to step into like, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I think that there are some shows that want to kind of highlight the disagreement mm -hmm. and maybe um, perpetuate it and keep it going. I kind of wanted to go in and put that fire out and remind them of why they're there and that that maybe they could find a middle ground to not just get along but but finish the challenge and to and to continue on as a team in the show and so i really wanted to kind of point out that that they actually had a lot more in common than not and um that was the goal um and i would have i think that we would have look the cameras are always running um but we would have done that anyway um because yeah again it's it, it's never my intent i don't want to be part of something that's inherently negative it, it yeah. doesn't interest me yeah and when you say the cameras are always running some of these challenges can go on for hours it's like 12 hour challenges and stuff what do you do to fill the time do you have to come up with scripted things to fill the time or are you kind of fine with playing by ear yeah, we, 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 it's a combination really, you know, we have things that we do like little informative, uh, um, pieces that we shoot, um, you know, interstitial type stuff where we talk about, you know, terms that the builders might use that the viewers at home might not be familiar with. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, like, uh, like snot, like studs, not on top or something like, you know, some sort of thing. And so we'll walk them through and, and, and discuss. So we'll shoot all these little pieces in between, but there are hours that go by where it's just the builder's building. Um, and so I try to stay close, you know, those hours are, you know, they're on the clock, um, working on the stage, uh, building those things. Um, obviously they have, there are breaks and stuff. We're not animals. <laughs> um, but <laughs> come on, Sam. But but we but we do. You know, I try to stay close and I'm constantly watching the feed. If I'm not even physically on the floor, mm -hmm. um, constantly have the feed up and 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 talking to um, Anthony and the guys about what's going on. Um, and then so that you know, uh, my friend Hamish hosts the Australian version uh, of Lego Masters, which is really good. And you know. I, 
truthfully, I just always wanted to make sure that we didn't let them down because they were so good at it. Um, and he's such a funny, great guy, Hamish. And I called him and, and said, you know, uh, I said, do you have any advice? Is there anything that, you know, that I could, I should think about it. And he said, you know, just try to stay close and just try to stay in it um, because that's where you're going to find the moments. Um, and so I, I tried to heed that advice and just constantly be around. Yeah. But what was great is that there there is such positivity to the show. And then that space drop one, you get to destroy everyone's creations <laughs> for that one episode. I know. Uh, is that was that really satisfying to do, like taking a baseball bat to things, or is it nerve wracking? Well, the the short answer is yes. It was very satisfying, um, but uh, you know, it was it was funny to hear people's reactions on that day, being there in the room and watching some of the builders as they reacted to me smashing stuff. Everybody, it was sort of quite. Uh, uh exciting in the moment um and everybody felt like oh we're being like bad kids <laughs> um but it, and, and also then you know hearing from fans and stuff at once that episode aired um there were people who were like almost aghast at it like i can't believe that you would break a, a lego build you know <laughs> and uh, which i get um but i think it's because of that there was a feeling of um anybody who's built uh and spent hours building something um, with Lego, you there was a weird satisfaction in just smashing it in one fell swoop. Um, and actually, when I was doing it, um, I wanted to make sure that it, it, there was a lot of pressure to hit it the right way, um, yeah. or and or just not miss. Um, as dumb as that might sound, and I wanted to make sure that uh, a I didn't look like a fool, um, but b the the nature of that particular challenge was that they had to build something that was cool and then it when it got destroyed and there were three different methods of being destroyed one was smashing me smashing with a uh, space ball bat uh the other one was um lacing it with um you know miniature explosives and the other was dropping it from on high um i wanted to make sure that i gave each one of those builds that i was smashing the benefit of smashing it the right way so that because they were being judged on how it disintegrated upon impact of the bat. So not only did I not like, want to look like an idiot, I also didn't want to let the teams down because I felt like, well, I'm part of this and it's kind of resting on me and I don't want <laughs> I don't want to smash something badly and then, then get penalized for it. And now I'm the reason that they're being sent home. Yeah. You, you also um, serve as an executive producer on the series. And I wondered, because there's a couple episodes that have guest judges or guest uh, hosts, um, like Maya Bialik and Chris, uh, uh, Bill Lord and Chris Miller, who, who you work with so well. Do you like pitch people? Do you think of who you might want to work with or who might be fun yeah. to have top of? Yeah, we, we definitely pitch people. Um, you know, Anthony also has a connection to Phil. Uh, he and Phil are cousins, which is great. Um, so we both kind of put the, the – Phil was – and Chris were feeling the pressure from both sides, from both of us. Um, and, um, you know, there are a lot of people. And now going forward, um, if we do an, another season, we're going to um, – we have lots of different names of people that we want. Um and we were able to get some great people to come on and some people weren't available. Um, we actually had a day where uh, Jason Bateman showed up with his daughter just because she's a huge Lego fan. Um, and I, I didn't let them put him on mic. So we have a whole like hour of Jason on the floor going through the, and interacting with everybody. And I'm like, oh, people would have loved to have seen that because he was great. He was super funny. Um, and uh, so yeah, so I we do. It is it's a constant conversation of who we want to have. We feel so blessed with who we did get. Uh, Nicole was awesome. Terry Crews was awesome. Uh, the best entrance I think in TV history. <laughs> Smashing through a wall with no shirt on. It was hilarious. Um, which and it was true. We caught we caught it in the show. But um, but Boone uh, had said to me earlier where I was saying like who would, who would you love to meet or who would, and he had said. Terry Crews, he had no idea, like zero, zero idea. He was on lockdown. And uh, he said, Terry Crews, I would love to meet Terry Crews. And I kind of looked at Bob, and uh, who works on the show, one of the writers, and, and, and Anthony kind of like, no way he just said that. And then to have 
that day to have Terry Crews smash through the wall and suddenly appear. The look on Boone, we had it like a camera isolated on Boone. We were like, we are gonna get this moment. Um, and it's just one of those great things that happened. And it was so, yeah, it was so sweet and fun. Yeah, uh, I, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention your, your work on BoJack Horseman this season, because um, you provide the voice of the lead character. You also produced that one. Um, and it was its final season, and it has such a strong following of, of people. And I think it's a really hard thing to do to end a series, conclude a series in a way that satisfies all the fans, especially with the internet echo chamber. Um, and this one basically got universal praise. So I'm wondering, like, what was the experience of working on that? Did it feel like a proper ending to you while you were working on it? Or were you scared of fan reaction? Um, Never scared of fan reaction. Uh, I always remember people debating. It was kind of before, it was really at the early days of the internet, but I remember the, the Sopranos finale. Right. And pe people debated forever. And I remember people, comments like, I watched this show for eight seasons or whatever, and they owed me a better ending. Right. I, always thought that, I always thought that was quite such a funny thing and I get that instinct I, I suppose but I also thought like well it's up to David Chase to do to end it how he wants to it's his story um so I it, it never really I was never worried about that and I also have you know just and have always had the utmost um admiration and confidence in Raphael's ability um he's just consistently told this amazing story that caught just got richer and deeper and more profoundly funny and sad um, as we went. And so I just knew that going into the final season, um, especially that we were breaking it up into two parts, um, I knew that he was gonna have enough runway to end it the way that he wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt very satisfied with what he did. And I love the ending, I, I think that it left a lot because there are no perfect endings in life, really. Nobody rides off into the sunset. That's an idea that is was created, um, and I, I thought it was a. I thought our ending was a much truer reflection of what a sort of a real life experience would be um, for somebody who's in recovery, um, who's suffering from the things that he suffers from. Um, that. You know, that story just kind of, we just, it's almost like we just pulled away from his life. It doesn't mean his life is over. It, everything didn't wrap up in a bow. We just stopped watching him. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very poignant ending. Um, and before I let you go, because we cover, we keep track of everyone's awards here at Gold Derby. Um, and you've been nominated for an Emmy six times over your yeah. career, most recently for BoJack. And um, it's you've been there uh, cited for several different projects. So what does that feel like to have continued recognition over different stages of your career? Yeah, it, it, it's um, it is definitely satisfying on a certain level. Um, um, I don't know if satisfying is the right word. Uh, just um, to when you get recognized in that way, um, I'd be lying if I said that it didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. um, um, but it's not necessarily, this might sound kind of like hollow, but it's it's not necessarily why I do it. It's not really something that I often think about, to be honest. Um, and I guess sometimes I'll, I'll joke that the, the sort of the only time I really think about it or reference it is when I, um, I refer to myself as a six-time loser. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, but, but, uh, but truly, it's yeah, it's great. I, look, I've I've been the beneficiary of working with um, really talented, great people. You know, starting with Arrested Development, um, I got to work with an incredible cast, and you know, and a truly brilliant writer in Mitch Hurwitz, who um, continuously provided me with an opportunity to work on great material. Um, Thirty Rock was was the same. Working with uh, Tina and, and Robert Carlock and and um, and then with Alec and all those in Jack McBrayer, again, they were in working on such a high level and I got to be kind of plugged into that. Um, and then Bojack, uh, of course, you know, Raphael, like I said, um, 
what a brilliant guy, what a privilege it's been to be able to show up every week and um, and say his words. It's one of those, actually, that's like a statement that I feel like I've heard before from an actor. And I thought like, oh, that seems so indulgent, but it's true. <laughs> you know, now that I'm sitting here on the other side, it's true. And then, and then moving into something completely different from like Lego Masters, the idea that people would reckon, potentially recognize us for that also feels satisfying. But again, a lot of really great, hardworking, talented people um, who make it possible. Um, and so I feel really fortunate. Yeah. Well, um, well, congratulations on the, the end of BoJack and I uh, can't wait to see more of Lego Masters. So everyone who's watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Keep in touch with us throughout any season. And Will, thank you so much for spending time with me. Definitely subscribe to Gold Derby <laughs> if I can leave you with anything. Absolutely. Thank you.